For 16 hours a day, we are awake and active. From getting up in the morning to when we go to bed, our brains are constantly working. But what are our brains doing for the other eight hours of our day when we're asleep? Quite surprisingly, there are some states of sleep. The brain actually appears to be more active, more coordinated than it does when we're awake. Dr. Ori Schaefer is a neurobiologist at the University of Michigan and funded by the National Science Foundation. He's investigating the brain's activity during sleep, specifically a part of the brain that governs every aspect of the daily lives of all animals, from insects to fish to humans, the internal clock. Every brain on the planet and every animal has deep within it a clock, and that clock controls the onset uh, and the offset of sleep in a way that we're all familiar with and that we all tend to wake up and become sleepy at the same time every day. Called the circadian clock, it controls the patterns in the brain that tells animals when to go to sleep and when to wake up. In fact, if you take a human being or, or a mouse or a fruit fly and you remove them from the cues from the environment, daily cues of light, daily cues of temperature, they continue to show a rhythm in sleep and wakefulness. Instead of studying the human brain, Schaefer's research focuses on the fruit fly, a common household insect with a tiny brain that offers a lot of clues about what makes the circadian clock tick. If you think about the human brain, the estimate is that there's one times 10 to the 11th neurons in our brain. That's an impossibly large number of neurons to keep track of. So the fruit fly, its entire nervous system has 100,000 neurons. Though it may be significantly smaller, the fruit fly's basic brain structure and neural activity is very similar to that of many other animals, including that of humans. In mammals, the brain's primary timekeeper is located in the hypothalamus. Called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, this tiny area of the brain is responsible for setting our master clock. If you don't have a suprachiasmatic nucleus in your brain, you can't keep time. You have no set rhythm in your sleep activity cycles, right? That is the master clock in your brain. Schaefer hopes the fruit fly will help solve how the master clock communicates time throughout the vast network of neurons in the brain. Where does the time go within the brain, right? How does that dedicated network of neurons that keeps track of internal time talk to the parts of the brain that control sleep. You had the model take a nap by mm -hmm. just like doing a wake bout, yeah. like up yeah. here. Helping in this effort is one of Schaefer's colleagues, Dr. Victoria Booth, who's also funded by the National Science Foundation. She uses mathematical modeling and analysis as predictive tools to study the problem through a slightly different perspective. What we've been motivated by is to actually build a mathematical model based on what they hypothesize this network looks like, how these different areas of the brain are connected together. By building a mathematical and computational model, Booth and her students will be able to plug in different scenarios of sleep cycles to see how the brain model responds in hopes of further understanding the circadian clock and its control of other parts of the brain. By building a math model, we can test some of the ideas the experimentalists have about how the system may work and then also identify like which areas of the brain might be targets for future experimental investigation. I'm confident, very confident, that the answers we get to those fundamental questions in the fly are going to continue to inform and enrich our attempts to understand timekeeping in the human brain. Combining the fields of math and science, Booth and Schaefer are unraveling one of the mysteries of the brain how the circadian clock helps us know when it's time to sleep and when it's time to wake up.